I would propose perhaps that we already go to our next uh, speakers. So Vanessa and uh, Davide are also two ESRs of the Smartings Consortium, and they will be talking about how Smartings tackles durability, service life, as well as sustainability. So Vanessa and Davide, the floor is yours. Okay, can you see the screen? Yes, perfect. Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. I'm Davide. And I am Vanessa. And uh, as part of Work Package 3 and Work Package 4, we are going to talk about the SmartThings approach to durability, service life, and sustainability. But prior to this, I wanted to start uh, thinking about something that could happen to everybody here in our daily life. For instance, imagine that your blood work will, de will detect a high cholesterol level. What could you do? For sure, you can continue to think that everything is uh, anyway fine. Simply drinking food supplements two times per day, but continuing to, to eat your unhealthy food. It is actually a palliative treatment. Or better, you can choose a systematic approach acting on the causes that affected your health. So basically, transferring this idea to the case of the damage of concrete structures, SmartThings is exactly applying a systematic approach. So today, we can proudly say that SmartThings is working on a perspective for the future. But concrete structures are part of our heritage. In fact, nowadays, we have thousands of concrete structures, of concrete structures but we don't have to forget the past because we have the, the opportunity to learn from it. For instance, the brutalist architecture, which was emerged in 1950 all around the world, leaves us iconic structures characterized by large use of cast-in-place concrete. Here, in this slide, I reported two examples. The one on the left is the Notre Dame Chapelle designed by Le Corbusier in France, and the second one is Torre Velasca, quite famous here in Milan. Both are related to the Brutalist architecture. But what is the problem related to these structures? The problem is that for both, several damage have been observed. Here in this picture, you can see what happened for the case of Torre Velasca, for instance. And uh, we have also to underline that, we have also to highlight, sorry, that for instance, for the case of the Notre Dame Chapelle, 2 million and 300,000 euros will be spent for the entire refurbishment. While taking into account that for the case of Torre Velasca, the cracks filling by, epoxy, by means of epoxy resin is the most adopted technique to restore the functionality, that specific technique here in Italy can cost around 65 euros per linear meter of the crack. So here we can stress the first topic, that is how cost could be, how, what is the cost related to the use of traditional solution? And additionally, taking into account the annual production value of the, of the construction industry in Europe, we have to say that 50% uh, of the annual construction budget is spent on the refurbishment of the existing concrete structures. So the first problem is for sure an economic problem, but not only economic, also a problem related to the environmental sustainability, because uh, since it is expected that by the end of 2030, the global cement production will be increased up to, to, up to 5,000 million metric tons. And since we know that the cement production is related to a huge amount of carbon dioxide emission, According to this, we have for sure another problem that is actually the sustainability problem related to the use of concrete in this case. But we are lucky. We are lucky since, uh, fortunately, self-filling concrete is a solution in this sense. It is a solution increasing the durability, decreasing the maintenance, and also reducing the consumption of resources. Because the higher the durability of a structure, the less is the global environmental impacts. And uh, doing this, we can introduce another method, that is the method of durability. Well, our team is made up of five people, six people in total, me, Davide, uh, Niranjan, Vanessa, Pardis, Kiran, and Lais. So first, we need to better understand what contributes to the durability of concrete structures. And we can have influence because of the concrete system, consider the materials and the process involved, 
And in addition, we also have influence from the aggressiveness of the environment, consider, uh, considering physical and chemical actions. That is the focus of our work at package. So how the environment attacks the reinforced concrete? Here, looking at, at all parts, they might be affected from the environment by many aggressive substances. Well, consider that crack is the main damage showed for all aggressive environments and is the pathway for the aggressive substance. The self-healing concrete comes as an innovative material to block this way for, uh, for aggressiveness, healing the cracks and improving the durability of the structure. Also, knowing the specific durability indicators for each self-healing concrete, we can predict an appropriate surface life to achieve the purpose of this material. So our standards give us some concrete quality indicators that vary according to the exposure class. However, these generally are not enough to predict an accurate surface life to consider the extreme environments. In this way, we need also durability indicators together with the concrete quality indicators. And here we have the indirect ones or some replacing, uh, replacement indicators that help to give similar information by different analysis. And despite this, some parameters related specifically to certain aggressive environments may still not be considered. So in this case, for self-healing concrete, the indicators need to be improved to know the specifics for each environment regarding each self-healing mechanism. And we can have several extreme conditions as freeze to attack without the icing salts or consider the icing salts that is the frost salt scaling, uh, chemical attacks by acid, chloride, sulfate, or combining both in marine environment, uh, carbonation, and instead of worse known as that, uh, cracks consider thermal actions, cyclically loading movements and impact actions. Our work at package will encompass all these environments. Now, uh, looking for each specific durability indicator, each condition has special ones that give an appropriate estimation of the performance and can help to develop service life predictions. Into the project, we have this concern as well. So here we have three people involved in tests, different self-healing concretes to support the self-service uh, life prediction. And for it, the laboratory research is being, is being done by ESR-10, that is Miranja, studying instead versus, uh, versus non-stead cracks. ESR-11, it's me, Vanessa, consider several extreme conditions uh, that I will go deeper later. And ESR-12, it is parties working with corrosion by chloride and CO2 ingress. So we three, we work in collaboration and by means of the laboratory research, we can reach that enough to support another colleague that is Kiram, ESR-30. Uh, she will work with durability indicators predicting the surface life for self-healing concrete. So now we can have a look deeper into what uh, each ESR is studying in this work at package. Here we have uh, uh, the focus of Niranjan, ESR-10. He will uh, study the healing performance in concrete structure elements by means of sustainable loading, repeated uh, cracking and healing uh, cycles, high strain rate and thermal actions. Uh, Niranjan already started work with the self-healing performance of uh, ultra-high performance fiber reinforcement concrete after freezing cycles. In the first picture, uh, the picture uh, is a specimen under a four-point bending test to open the cracks. And in the second photo, we can see the behavior of, of the multiple cracks creation. And in the last one are the specimen placed in the freeze chamber to perform the cycles. So um, here, here we have the preliminary results for the ultrasonic pulse velocity test for each specimen. Uh, consider the decreasing in the velocity after freeze -tow. Some samples were subject to healing periods and then uh, showed an increase in the velocity again, demonstrated recovered capacity after that period. 
Uh, here, Niranjan performed some image analysis to quantify the area of the crack closet. And in the first image, we can see the crack in the white color after crack creation. The second is the same crack now with the reduced white area because of the healing and almost complete closing the third uh, related to the third month of the healing period. Uh, now, introducing my topic, my focus is to analyze the healing performance under different extreme conditions, consider several uh, self-healing mechanisms. And for these two commercial products are inserted, that is a type of bacteria, a crystalline admixture, and also the production of capsules, macro and micro capsules. So finally, the aim is to create a matrix, consider all data to find the optimal self-healing mechanisms for each uh, ex uh, extreme condition. I already started some experiments, consider Frizitol with the icing salts, and here I bring some results for the bacteria healing agent under this condition. In this experiment, I follow a standard that measure the scaled material during the Frizitol cycles, and on the graph, on the right, there are the results of uh, scaled material in time. Consider uh, that the line is the average and the areas represent the standard deviation. So even for cracked or uncracked concrete, the bacterial concrete showed a huge increase in the properties to resist the freeze thaw effects compared to the reference concrete. Now looking at the chloride in grass, after freeze-thaw cycles in the graphs, uh, the white axis represents the depth of the chloride penetration. Consider that the zero point is the top or the contact area with the salt solution. Uh, the first graph represents the results for uncracked concrete. Here the bacteria concrete reduced the chloride penetration compared to the reference concrete. And in the second, we have the cracked concrete now the results consider the standard deviation have an overlap. However, both were not able to prevent the chloride ingress through the crack. And uh, looking at the microscope images for similar cracks, the bacteria concrete produced healing products to seal the cracks during the healing period. And nevertheless, they were removed together with material that was scaled off the surface due to the cyclic well, parties wants to mitigate the chloride and CO2 ingress. Here, the main objective is to prevent the corrosion process. Consider these aggressive environments, we can have corrosion of the reinforcement, and this causes the reduction of the durability, which also decreases the surface lack of structures. So, parties need to know the transport mechanism of those aggressive substances in different concrete qualities, consider different crack widths. Here uh, is her experiment program, involves uh, autogenous and autonomous healing. For auto uh, autogenous, three concrete mixed typologies will be studied with different strains from ordinary concrete to uh, ultra high performance concrete. And for autonomous, the same commercial products already presented previously, uh, that are the bacteria in crystalline admixture and some also microcapsules with corrosion inhibitors. So currently, parts already did her secondment together with uh, Kira, uh, and it is possible to see both during a concrete casting in the first picture. Uh, she is developing uh, now, initial tests to better understand the transport mechanisms uh, through the chloride migration test. And later, she can go deeper, analyze the healed agents. So, parties will provide support with data to Kiram uh, for the service life prediction and consider the transport and the corrosion initiation. Uh, well, uh, we need into the project to quantify and predict the durability of the self-healing uh, concrete. And to reach this end, the first step is to know what are the limitations, the advantages and the disadvantages of each self-healing mechanism. This will be developed in collaboration with the work at package one and two in order to fit the pieces of this big puzzle. So the second step is to develop the experiments with a focus on each realistic environment condition. 
uh, testing these serve C conditions, analyze all system mix design and different crack whips. After it, we will obtain a data collection that will be the basis for serve C life prediction, life cycle assessment and cost analysis. And in the end, a possible commercialization, commercialization road can be developed to reach the best option for each realistic environment, consider the costs and the benefits. That David will explain better now. Well, exactly. To explain the potentiality of self-healing material, we have to pass from the lab scale to the real life scale. As already done actually in the framework of the Resilience project. Here, for instance, you can see a pilot that was there realized. It is a muscle raft at Valencia port, um, realized using uh, self-healing concrete. And uh, in this case, for instance, it was possible to develop a life cycle assessment um, for concrete containing with the crystal net mixture in comparison to the ordinary solution. In that specific case, for instance, the life cycle assessment underlined that, for instance, for the case of acidification, it was possible to uh, decrease the overall impacts up to 90%. That is actually quite interesting. Um, but uh, in this framework, uh, we can for sure underline the importance of life cycle assessment and the life cycle cost, because we can define both as a part of a holistic design approach, because all of us, as engineers, as users, or also as a, um, owners of specific companies, we can't exclude the environmental and economic aspects. And just for instance, to answer to the question by, by Thomas, holistic design means thousands of things, but means, for instance, that we have also to take into account uh, not only the initial investment costs related to the use of self-healing concrete, but in that specific case, we have also to uh, take into account all the costs related to the entire service life of a general structure. Well, um, in this sense, life cycle assessment and life cycle cost uh, could be an additional value to support the choice of self-healing concrete, but also to support the potentiality of these innovative materials. And uh, moreover, what we can highlight that uh, we can consider life cycle assessment and life cycle cost as a kind of business tool to combine and to penetrate the market. Uh, but in this regard, we can simply say that SmartThings is anticipating the future because as it is displayed in this, uh, this slide, if we compare the self healing market uh, in comparison uh, to 2016. By the end of this year, it is expected that the self-healing market related to the building and construction sector will be increased up to 73.8%. That is really interesting in this regard. So again, uh, ESR15, that is LACE, is involved in the commercialization of the product because uh, the final aim of SmartX project is to provide something for the market. So just to summarize in our work package, uh, uh, um, we have to pass from the basic and applied research until the commercialization of the product through the development of new products and also assessing the environmental and sustainability and the cost sensibility of these innovative materials that are developed. Well, to summarize, our focus is to fill the gaps related to self-healing concrete. And to solve the problem regarding the lab scale uh, experiments, Niranjan, Pardes, and I will answer these questions, how to, to simulate these environments on a lab scale, and what are the limitations of each self-healing mechanism in realistic conditions. And to know how these self-healing mechanisms perform in large scale, predicting the service life, Kiran will work in developing real scale uh, structures. And to show what is their life cycle assessment, David will work to develop it for the self-healing concrete to demonstrate the benefits related to sustainability. And the five of us are composing the work at package three. Lastly, and very important, is how much cost these solutions. Uh, here, David and Laís will work together to fill this gap. And Laís also into the work at package four with a focus on transfer this technology, we will answer if the market is ready to apply this innovative material. So we are a huge team and collaboration is the way to reach the goals. Work at package one and two 
are the base for all deeper analysis. And we are the team that will apply all types of self-healing concrete in realistic conditions, looking at predicted service life justified by sustainability and data and transfer this technology to the market. So thanks to everyone. And I hope you have learned about our approach in this Martin's framework. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, Davide. I was actually um, wondering, Vanessa or Davide, uh, since you are comparing um, self-healing agents uh, with a traditional approach, um, one aspect can be that you have a, a direct safe in, in money, but another aspect can also be that you have a beneficial influence, for example, with regards to the environment. Are there ways that you can um, tag a, a monetary value to the, the benefits that you have for the environment? Yeah, in this regard, we already developed a specific analysis, like so-called assessment analysis. For instance, I assessed the case of uh, self-healing concrete containing uh, superabsorbent polymers. Uh, well, actually, at the end, uh, the advantage or disadvantage, it depends on the time frame that you, you, you analyze. Uh, for instance, considering a service life of uh, 100 years, in my case, it was possible to estimate a reduction for the case of photochemical oxidation around 90% in comparison to the case of uh, uh, traditional solution. So it depends on the case, it depends on the self-healing agent that you use, actually. But for that specific case, for the case of self-healing concrete containing superabsorbent polymers, we demonstrated that it is possible to obtain uh, interesting results in this regard. And also regarding the economic aspects, um, well, uh, if you consider the initial investment cost, uh, for sure, since you add something in the entire process, you will have an extra overall cost at the starting point. But taking into account the overall service life and also taking into account the overall maintenance activities, it is possible to demonstrate also taking into account the discount rate for uh, activities that will be developed in the future. It is possible to demonstrate that the total amount for uh, a concrete structure made up with a self-healing agent will be lower in comparison to a traditional solution. For the case that I mentioned before, for instance, it was possible to demonstrate that in the same time frame of uh, 100 years, the overall expenses were reduced up to three times. Okay, yes. Thank you, Davide, for this very clear answer. 